You play chess on an 8x8 board of light and dark squares. Always turn the board so that a light square is in the lower right corner. Light on right is an easy way to remember this. Rows on the chessboard are called ranks, 1 to 8. These pawns are all on rank 4. Columns on the chessboard are called files, A to H. These pawns are all on the D file. Rank and row both start with R. This is an easy way to remember rank and file. Chess is a war between two opposing armies, white and black. Start by setting up the white army on your side of the board. Put one rook at each end of rank one. The rook looks like a castle or tower. Next to each rook, place a knight. The knights look like horses. Add a bishop next to each knight. The bishop has a notch in his hat. There are two empty squares left on the near rank. The queen is placed on the square that matches its color. Queen on color is an easy way to remember where the queen goes. White queen on a white square, or the dress matches the shoes. The king goes on the last empty square. At the front of the army go the pawns, or foot soldiers. Put one pawn directly in front of each piece. Now set up black's pieces. Black's pieces always start on rank 8. Two black rooks, two black knights, two black bishops, queen on color, black queen on black square, the black king, pawns in front of pieces. White always makes the first move in a game. Now you're ready to play chess. Starting with white, each side takes turns moving. You are allowed to move only one piece on each turn. Each piece has its own way of moving on the chessboard. To play chess, you must learn how each piece moves. The bishop. The bishop moves along either diagonal. Notice that the bishop always moves to squares of the same color as the one it starts on. This white bishop is restricted to diagonals made up of dark squares. This black bishop is restricted to diagonals made up of light squares. Each side begins the game with two bishops, one that moves on light squares and one that moves on dark squares. White's dark diagonal bishop White's light diagonal bishop, black's light diagonal bishop, black's dark diagonal bishop. Like the queen, the bishop cannot move over another piece. Here the black rook blocks the white bishop from reaching b5 and a6. As usual, if the blocking piece belongs to the opposing color, the bishop can capture it simply by moving to that square. Bishop takes rook. Because it attacks fewer squares and is restricted to light or dark squares, the bishop is a weaker piece than the queen or rook. Castling is a special move involving the king and either rook. Castling moves two pieces. First, Move the king two squares toward the rook. Then put the rook on the other side of the king. You can castle with either rook. Here the king castles with the other rook. If the king moves toward the nearer rook, on the king's side of the board, it is called castling kingside, written O-O. If the king moves toward the other rook on the queen's side of the board, 
It is called Castling Queenside, written O-O-O. To be legal, the king and rook must not have moved from their starting squares. The squares between the king and rook must be unoccupied. The king cannot be in check. And the square that the king passes over cannot be under attack. Of course, the king can never be moved into check, so the destination cannot be under attack either. It is usually a good idea to castle early in the game, as it protects the king and gives the rook a chance to control the center files. If it's your turn to move, and your king could be captured on your opponent's next move, you are in check. Check. Here the white queen threatens to capture the black king, so black is in check. If your king is in check, your very next move must remove the threat. There are three ways to remove a threat to your king. One, move your king to a square that is not under attack by your opponent. Or, two, capture the threatening piece with one of your pieces. Or, three, block the threat by moving one of your other pieces. If you cannot move, capture, or block, you are checkmated and you lose the game. Here is a very simple example, known as the fool's mate. Checkmate, black wins. White cannot move the king out of check, capture black's queen, or block the black queen's attack on e1. So, white is checkmated and black wins. The object of the game is to checkmate your opponent while avoiding checkmate yourself. By the way, you are not allowed to move into check. In other words, you cannot make a move that lets your opponent capture your king. For example, the white king cannot move to e2, d2, or f2. All those moves would let black's rook capture the white king immediately. White would be giving up by making such a move. If you are certain that you cannot win, you may resign rather than wait for your opponent to checkmate you. This says to your opponent, Okay, you win. The king is the most important chess piece. If you checkmate your opponent's king, you win. If your king is checkmated, you lose. In a checkmate, the king is not captured. Instead, you win if you could capture your opponent's king on your next move, and there is no move your opponent can make to prevent that from happening. After seeing how the other pieces move, you will return to the subject of checkmate. First, look at how the king moves. The king can move one square in any direction. The ghost kings show the squares to which this white king can legally move. Important rule number one. You may never move one of your pieces, even the king, to a square occupied by another of your pieces. For example, the white king on E2 can move to every square except F2, which is occupied by another white piece, a pawn. Important rule number two. If an opposing piece occupies a square to which you can move, you can capture the opposing piece by moving to that square and removing your opponent's piece from the board. For example, the white king can capture the black pawn on e3 because the white king can move to that square. King takes or captures pawn. Although the king is the most important piece, it is also one of the weakest because it can't move very far in a single turn. 
To win the game, the king must rely on the rest of his army. The knight. The knight makes L-shaped moves. Two squares along a rank or file, and then one square at a right angle. For example, two squares along rank four, and one square at a right angle along the B file. It could also move to B5. Or two squares along a file, and then one square along rank 5. It could also move to A5. Here are all the squares that a knight on D4 can reach. Notice that the knight always lands on a square of a different color from the one on which it starts. The knight is special. It jumps over pieces. As always, you cannot move the knight to a square containing another piece of the same color, such as B3. But you can capture an opponent's piece on the destination square. Knight takes rook. The knight, like the bishop, is considered less powerful than the queen or rook. Even though it attacks fewer squares than a bishop, its jumping ability makes it a valuable piece. En passant is a special type of capture move for pawns only. You may capture en passant only when your opponent moved a pawn two squares forward on the previous move. Here is an example of black capturing white's pawn en passant. White just moved a pawn two squares forward, and the black pawn captures on the very next move by moving diagonally behind the white pawn. This is a useful move when your opponent tries to sneak a pawn past yours by moving two squares. But remember, if you wish to capture en passant, you must do so on your very next move. The Pawn All white pawns start from rank 2. All black pawns start from rank 7. Pawns always move toward the opposite side of the board. From its starting square, a pawn may travel one or two squares forward. One square. Two squares. The first time a pawn is moved, it's the player's choice. A pawn that has moved, like the one on F3, may only move one square forward per move. Unlike other pieces, the pawn cannot capture an opposing piece that lies in its path. Here, the white pawn cannot capture the black rook. A pawn can only capture a piece on one of the two squares diagonally in front of it. Here, the black pawn can capture either the white rook or white knight, but not the white queen. Pawn takes knight. Pawns are the least valuable piece, but don't throw them away thoughtlessly. A single pawn can sometimes mean the difference between winning and losing. When a pawn reaches the opposite side of the board, it must be promoted to a queen, rook, bishop, or knight. Normally, you choose to promote your pawn to a queen. Promoting a pawn to a piece other than a queen is called under-promotion. Here, white under-promotes a pawn to a knight to achieve checkmate. Because of promotion, an opponent's pawn that is unopposed is a dangerous threat. Here, the white king is too far away to capture the black pawn. Black can now win the game with ease. Remember, only pawns can be promoted. This makes pawns more valuable than they seem at first glance. 
A promotion can instantly change the balance of power in a game. By the way, you may promote a pawn to a queen even if you already have one or more on the board. It is possible, but extremely unlikely, to promote all eight of your pawns to other pieces. The Queen The Queen can move horizontally along ranks, vertically on files, or along either diagonal. The Queen cannot move over another piece of either color. Here the White Queen is blocked by the white pawn on F4 and cannot reach G4 or H4. This black pawn blocks the white queen as well. Like the king, the queen may capture the black pawn by moving to the square it occupies, but no farther. Queen takes pawn. The queen is the most powerful piece because of her ability to attack so many squares simultaneously. The Rook The Rook moves horizontally along ranks and vertically along files. The Rook cannot move over another piece of either color. Here the White Rook is blocked by the Black Pawn on D6 and cannot reach D7 or D8. When blocked by an opponent's piece, the rook may capture it by moving to the square it occupies. Rook takes pawn. Like the queen, the rook is a strong piece because of its ability to attack several squares simultaneously. A stalemate occurs when the side to move is not in check and all possible moves place that side in check. Since it is illegal to move into check, the side to move cannot move, but the side to move is not in check, so it's not checkmate. The result, stalemate, which is considered to be a draw. Neither side wins. Here's an example. Assume it is White's turn to move. White starts by making a bad move. Check. Black is in check, so must move out of the way. White now makes another bad move. It is now Black's turn. The only possible moves, King to H2 or G1, would put the King in check, which is illegal. Since Black cannot move, but is not in check, it is a stalemate. Black was lucky. White should have won this game with king and rook against king. Here's how. White starts by moving. Black's only legal move is... White responds with... Check. Again, black has only one legal move. Here's the tricky part. White needs to waste one move so that black will be forced into a desired position. This is called temporizing. White temporizes with black is forced to move. And now white wins with checkmate. A good chess player must understand checkmate and stalemate. In the previous example, black avoided a certain loss because white did not see the possibility of a stalemate. Here is a quick summary of the chess pieces. Important rule number one. You may never move one of your pieces to a square occupied by another of your pieces. Important rule number two. If an opposing piece occupies a square to which you can move, you can capture the opposing piece by moving to that square and removing your opponent's piece from the board. The king moves one square in any direction. 
The queen moves along ranks, files, and diagonals. The rook moves along ranks and files. The bishop moves along light or dark diagonals. The knight makes L-shaped moves, two squares along a rank or file, then one square at a right angle. Pawns normally move one square towards the opposite side of the board, except when capturing. Pawns move forward, but capture diagonally. All other pieces capture the same way they move. The first time it moves, a pawn may travel one or two squares forward. Except for special moves, castling, promotion, and en passant captures, that's all there is to know about moving the various chess pieces.